This is a short video on what's it mean for a metric space to be complete. So or in other words, complete metric spaces. So I'll give you the definition just right off the bat. So we're going to say that your metric space XD is complete um, if every Cauchy sequence from X, so every Cauchy, I should spell Cauchy sequence from X uh, has a limit in X um, or converges in X to a limit in X. And uh, what I'd like to do is if you didn't watch the Cauchy sequence video yet, that might be good, good place to start. Um, but I want to give you some examples of maybe a complete metric space versus an incomplete metric space. So let's start with, I won't name it yet. And so uh, I'll just do this one. So let's say that my x is the set 0, comma 1, where I'm not including 0, but I am including 1. And so I'm just on the real line, right? Think about that you know, as this interval, uh, 0, but don't want it, 1, and I do want it. So think about it that way. Maybe, yeah, I'll write it that way. Cool. So there's x. And let's just say, I'll say the distance between two numbers is just like I'd usually do absolute value x minus y. And so what I want to do is I want to cook up a Cauchy sequence maybe and think about can I see what its limit would be to. And in the previous video uh, I looked at here's the sequence xn and maybe I'll write it without the brackets. It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. Let's say xn is 1 over n you know for all natural numbers n. This is my sequence. So all, all such numbers like this definitely live inside of x. So and if you watch the previous video, this is a Cauchy sequence uh, from X. But let's think about, you know, what is this thing's limit? Well, the limit of this thing, so the limit, you know, as n goes to infinity, that's what we always mean by limit of a sequence. Um, so the limit as our list, we go farther and farther and down our list, uh, it's just gonna be zero, right? As, as your n gets bigger, this is one over n, and I'm just playing with good old real numbers, I know that this is equal to zero. And so, so this is like what I'm calling x uh, converges to some limit. Maybe I haven't named it yet. So the limit is zero. And so what's going on here? I forget I said that x right now. Well, what's this limit? Uh, well, this limit is not an element of my set. So what just happened? And so I should say the limit of this Cauchy sequence is not in x. Well, that's not good. And so why is that not good? Or what, what are we gonna, how are we gonna tell somebody it's not good? We're gonna say that this metric space is incomplete. And so um, zero, one, D, if I think about that as again, my X comma D notation for a metric space, this is incomplete. All right, so can you exhibit a Cauchy sequence that converges, but its limit does not live in the set. Um, another um, incomplete metric space would be something like um, x equals the rational numbers, say, and we'll keep our usual distance function, say the distance between two rational numbers. I'll just look about how far they are on a number line. And so maybe still think about a number line, but I'm only thinking about the rational numbers on the number line. And so, uh, you know, what could we have? We could have a sequence um, of points where x1 is like a 1.4 and x2 is like 1.41 and then so on. And what I'm trying to do is, I don't remember what the rest of the decimals are off the top of my head, but I'm thinking about, you know, I could get a bunch of decimals that further and further down the list, they get close to the square root of two. And so what's my point here? Well, these, po these uh, points in my sequence, these things are Cauchy. Or I guess uh, these, if I put them all together in a list that forms a Cauchy sequence, and I tried to cook this thing up so that the limit is the square root of two, uh, but again, this point, square root of two, is not an element of the set where I live at. And so Q, the rational numbers, are not a complete metric space. So Q, D, is also incomplete. And, uh, in fact, like this is what 
um, kind of inspired some mathematicians to try to construct the real numbers where, okay, what happens when you complete Q? What if you threw in all the limits of Cauchy sequences of rational numbers? What you get is exactly the real numbers. So in fact, RD is the completion of Q. QD. And so again, what do I mean by that? And so completion is what you get if you um, include all limits of Cauchy sequences, in my case, from QD. So what if we throw square root of 2 in there? And you could probably guess you could get square root of 3 in there. And there's decimal approximations to pi and all that good stuff. So they all get thrown in. And what you get at the end of that should just be uh, the real numbers um, themselves. And so some other um, interesting things about um, what's another way to maybe check if a metric space is complete. And so um, I guess an interesting theorem. So a good theorem here is if xd is just a metric space um, such that every Cauchy sequence has a convergent subsequence say convergent subsequence and what is a subsequence by the way maybe I'll go on a little detour here subsequence so let's say that's a and then I'll finish the theorem but detour is good let's say I've got x x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, blah, blah, blah. All the subsequences is that you just pick in, maybe randomly, who knows, but just picking some of the points from your list and making a sequence out of those. So not necessarily all the red ones in your list, you know, just pick some. And when I say some, I mean infinitely many, like you can't just pick three of them. I guess if you repeat it, maybe you could. But uh, again, my point, just pick some of the things in your list and make a new sequence out of those. So that's all the subsequences. So what am I saying? If the blue thing has a limit, if it converges, uh, then in fact, if you could say that much about every Cauchy sequence in your metric space, then that's enough for your metric space to be complete. So as a convergent subsequence, then xd is complete.